Hello everyone, my name is Riccardo Ranieri and I'm going to show you a quick way to transform a physical Windows 10 installation into a virtual one, using only free tools and fixing a problem that usually occurs when Windows was originally installed in EFI mode. Let's start checking our disk setup. This is a physical installation of Windows 10. For what is worth, here I'm using a Microsoft Surface Pro 3 that is basically a laptop. We have the main C drive, then a micro SD card in the built-in reader, and finally an USB external disk that we will use for our migration. Here we are using an empty disk, but it's not mandatory. The target disk has to be in NTFS format to avoid file size restrictions that exist in FAT32 partitions. In a nutshell, we are going to copy the entire system disk to our external USB drive, turning it into a virtual machine that will be identical to the source one. We will do it with disk to VHD, a free tool from CIS Internals. The user interface is very minimalist. It shows the list of partitions that were found on our system, the same we have seen in the File Explorer. In addition to this, we have two system partitions that are normally hidden. There is another one that is not listed here, but we will talk later about this. Let's start checking only the partitions we want to be part of the virtualized system we are going to build. Here we want to keep the C drive, so we uncheck the other units, the D SD card and the E external USB disk. The system partitions have to be included, so let's keep the checks on them. Here we choose where to save the big file that will contain everything. In our case it's the E external drive, but your target could be different. Just choose where to put the file and set a name for it. You can even save it in the same disk you are duplicating, it will not cause a loop. The process will be slower, but if you have enough space, it will work. The last important option is use VHDX. Just keep it unchecked, because we will use VirtualBox for the virtualization process and today it doesn't support the VHDX format yet, so don't check this option and make sure you are creating a VHD file. Ok, everything is set, so we can click on create. The process will last a long time, especially if you are cloning a big drive or your target drive is not like a bat out of hell. In this case we are copying a 250 drive to a USB 2.0 external disk and it will take almost 2 hours. With the magic of cinema we can make these 2 hours turn into seconds. When the process is over we can take a look to the generated file. Its size should correspond more or less to the sum of the used space in the partitions we choose in this 2 VHD. Well, the file is ready, so we can proceed with the virtualization. We will use VirtualBox, you can do it also with other softwares like the ones from VMware or Microsoft Hyper-V. Here I'm using VirtualBox because it's free, it's open source and it has a wide community around so it's easy to ask help or find useful information on the internet. In addition to this, I already use it for other projects on Vagrant that I'm sharing with the customer, so this is my choice. But feel free to experiment with other solutions if you prefer, and make me know in the comments if you would like to share your experience. VirtualBox interface is quite intuitive. Just click on New to start a simple wizard that asks for the name of the virtual machine we are creating. Let's name it with something banal like my P2V Windows Machine. You have to select the OS family 
and the version of the operating system you will use. Here it's a Windows 10 of 64, just like the source physical machine. Next, the memory we want to assign to the VM. It's about optimization. You can leave uh, two gigabytes that VirtualBox sets by default and maybe change it later if you have plenty of RAM on the host machine and, it, and you want your VM to run a little faster. The last step asks you about the hard drive of this virtual machine. We already have it, so let's choose use an existing virtual hard disk file and uh, of course choose the VHD file we created with this to VHD before. Just click on create and your brand new machine is saved and ready. The physical installation from which we clone Windows was installed using an EFI disk setup, so we have to change the setting of the virtual one accordingly. Let's open the settings of the VM. In the system section we have a checkbox. Enable EFI. It has to be activated. Now it's time to try with the first boot. We don't expect to see our VM work on first try. And in fact, as you can see, we have got the UFI shell inside of the Windows boot screen. This is the problem I was telling you in advance, during the quick introduction of this tutorial. This to VHD is not able to do a proper copy of the EFI partition. This partition is responsible for the initial boot, so we have to recreate it to get our virtual machine running. Take note that everything we will do from now on is needed only for EFI systems. If you are cloning a non-EFI physical machine, for example a legacy one based on BIOS, the virtual one will be simply boot without further steps. Well, a Windows boot disk is what we did. Maybe you will not have it, because manufacturers don't ship new computers with installation media nowadays. The good news is that we can get an installation ISO file directly from Microsoft using their Windows 10 media creation tool that is freely downloadable. The tool is very simple, you have only to choose to create a new installation media because we need an ISO file. Here I am editing the language just because it detects my primary language that is Italian, but I prefer to have an English install disk for this tutorial. Again choose ISO file here because uh, we don't need to install it on an external drive and choose where to save the ISO. Let's save it on the desktop. The download is huge, so pay attention if you are using a method connection. It will take uh, about half an hour if you are using broadband. When the download is over, simply click on finish. And we ended up with our 3.5 GB ISO file on the desktop. Now back on VirtualBox and our dead shell. We open the devices menu and choose optical drives, then choose disk image. Of course, we pick the ISO file we just downloaded and finally we request a reset. Here you have to quickly press a key to boot from the ISO file. And here the Windows 10 installation comes. I just changed the keyboard map because I'm using the Italian layout. Of course we don't want to reinstall Windows on our virtual machine. We will use it only to restore the boot EFI partition. A first click on troubleshoot 
and the second on command prompt. Let's use Disk Part, a Microsoft tool for partition management. When the Disk Part prompt appears, type List Disk. We should have only one disk, so we choose it typing Select Disk 0. Now we want to check the list of the available volumes with list vol and this is the list. There is the main C drive that is volume 1. We recognize it also by its size. We have the mounted ISO disk with the letter D. And then we can see the two system partitions that we selected in disk 2 VHD. Here they are marked as volume 2 and 4 without letters. In the middle we have volume 3 without letter, 200 megabytes and reported as raw format. This is the EFI partition and in fact something is wrong with it because it should be in FAT32 format. Let's fix it. We type select vol3 but double check you are selecting the right one, your volume number could be different. And then assign letter L followed by a column. I chose L simply because it's not in use, but it's a random choice. Now that we have a letter for this volume, we can format it. We do it with this command, format fs equals sign fat32 space label equals sign boot, boot between double quotes. The format process will be very quick. Now we can exit this part simply typing exit. And move to the newly formatted L volume, typing L followed by a colon. What we are going to do now is to manually recreate structure of the boot directory in this volume that is empty. We create an EFI directory typing mdefi and then we enter it with cdefi. Now that we are in the EFI directory, we create another directory named Microsoft with mdmicrosoft. Then we enter the Microsoft directory with cdmicrosoft and we create a third directory named boot with md boot. Finally, we enter also into this last directory with cd boot and we are ready to set up the volume. Type boot rack space slash fix boot. It should be immediate. A side note. Sometimes this doesn't work and you will get an access is denied error. In this case you will have to perform some additional steps that I cover in a little appendix at the end of this video. So just jump forward if you are stuck at this point. If you get the confirmation message we are almost done. Type bcd boot space c colon backslash windows space slash l n hyphen us slash s space l colon space slash f space all this is the l of our l volume it's a long command but it was the last one After some seconds you will get a confirmation message. We are done. 
type exit to quit the command line and come back to the preview screen. Click on turn off your PC and we are back to the VirtualBox control panel. Click start again. This time we will not touch the keyboard because we want a regular boot from the C drive. If you see the dots spinning, it's a good sign. Let's go in high speed mode. And finally, it just works. Don't be scared if the virtualization system is very, very slow. It depends by many factors, but it can be improved and probably it doesn't depend by the host computer or by VirtualBox. For example, here I virtualized the system that originally runs on a solid state drive using a traditional external hard disk and moreover it's running on USB 2.0 that is not exactly the best in terms of performances. Don't forget to install the VirtualBox guest additions that will optimize Windows to run in virtualized mode. It installs a set of custom drivers for the virtual hardware, the video card in particular, and installing it is always a good idea. We are at the end of our tutorial. I hope it will be useful for you. Thanks for watching. A note about the access is denied error. It can occur when we type the bootrec command. It has happened to me, but it's not the norm. I think it's related to the way disk 2 VHD creates the structure of the virtual disk. Something goes wrong and we get a locked EFI partition. The working solution I found is to remove and recreate it from scratch. List the partition table, identify the one that contains the EFI volume. You can search for a size correspondence, in my case it's 200 megabytes, so I select partition 2. Then type delete partition override. Now, as you can see, partition 2 is gone, leaving a hole between partitions 1 and 3. With a simple create partition primary, this part will fill this gap with a new partition with the same size of the one we just deleted. Now we can proceed with the other steps without getting into the access denied error when you give the bootrec command.